You are on to a life transforming experience as Pastor Prince Abel brings you God's word with deep insights and power. God bless you. Rested and destroyed in your life, you can be touching things, and those things you're touching are not flourishing because of the presence of an entity that has taken an oath. His assignment is to execute poverty on the earth. Nations can be delivered just as individuals can be. Do you know there are places you go to, you notice that the poverty that is spread across that territory is so contagious. That if you have eyes in the spirit, you look at the quality of life of the people. You wonder why is everybody at this level in life? It's because they are territorial gatekeepers that says until they accomplish their assignment for which they were deployed to carry out, they will not give that city rest. And until you know how to enter the house of a strong man and bounce that man, you can't take what belongs to you. That's why the assignment God. Gave Moses before he sent him to Egypt was to go to Pharaoh and bind Pharaoh. How do you bind Pharaoh? Pharaoh, let my people go. You have to confront Pharaoh before you enjoy freedom. You know, you know what I'm saying. Am I preaching here? Am I preaching here? So, guess what? When Moses came to Pharaoh, he said, Pharaoh, you know what Moses was addressing? Moses was not addressing a physical person. He was addressing a spirit. A stubborn spirit at that. The first time he came with signs and wonders, dropped his sticks, and he turned into snake. Pharaoh said, we are used to this thing. Pharaoh also dropped his own. Listen, that you are a man of God, a child of God, Tongue speaking doesn't mean the devil is scared of you. It doesn't mean he's scared of you. As a matter of fact, that you are a child of God is enough reason why he will try you. Eh? Eh? Have you seen a football team playing against itself? Eh? A football team will not play against itself. They will play against their opponent. You are Satan's opponent in the pitch of life. Satan will not bother about people who are playing in his wings. He bothers about you who is playing in God's wings. Oh. He bothers about you who is playing in the wing of God. That's why you must submit yourself to God and resist the devil at all costs. Because he wants to gain a foothold in your life. He wants to operate inside of you so that the program of God is prohibited from coming to fruition in your life. This morning, under the anointing of God on my life, everything holding you down leaves you right now. I didn't hear that amen as loud as loud. We are on this subject of deliverance. So Moses said to Pharaoh, let my people go. But Pharaoh refused. Do you know it took more than 10, it took up to 10 attempts backed up with 10 signs for Pharaoh's heart to change. The first one, no way. Second one, he hadn't. Third time, hadn't. Fourth time, hadn't. Pharaoh thought it was his constitutional right to retain Israel in slavery. This is my right. You don't have any power over this. Who are you? These ones were given to us, sold to us. We have power over them. Who are you to come and receive them? Do you know that there are forces and there are devils that think it is their legal right to retain ownership of you? Even after you've given your life to Jesus. In their mind, they feel that this one, the deals that their father, 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 ancestors of many thousands of years, the deals they made is still valid. You know, in the realm of the spirit, time is not a factor. What is 1,000 years in the realm of nature is a day in the realm of the spirit. So somebody might be saying, ah, they said I'm suffering something that my ancestors of 1,000 years did. Ah, ah, by now you should have been forgotten now. No, they don't forget here. They are not bound by time in the realm of the spirit. 
There are forces that think and they believe that as long as you are a product of a certain lineage where they have some contract and agreement, you have no right to say that you are a Christian. Who born you? You are our own. And when they come, they come on the terms of the deal they had even before you were born. Listen to me. I'll show you some scriptures this morning. I'll help you. Because that is you must deal with to experience full-fledged dominion. There's never a person who was created to operate below the agenda and the program of God. The program of God for your life is dominion. The wish of God for your life is that you would have all that you need and even more to fulfill destiny. Finally, Pharaoh lets these people go. But it didn't happen by chance. It happened by intense, committed bargaining for the release of the people held bound in Egypt. Do you know that there are things that concerns your life and destiny? You will not get it on a platter. You will get it by fire, by force. When we assert the fire of deliverance, like we're going to do in this meeting, whether this morning or evening, when we are sat the fire of deliverance over people, what we are doing is to enforce a different program of God over that person, so that the current program running will be suspended, will expire for a new program to begin to run. I have seen cities come to ruin on account of this. I've seen families come to ruin on account of this. My guests from abroad were flying in. When they were coming, Pastor Sharon, the lady from the USA, told me something when we were coming back from the airport. She said, Man of God, he said, while I was flying in from the US, in the aircraft I met a Nigerian and we became friends. And I asked her, and she asked me, I was going to Nigeria. I thought I was going to a place called the Boney State. He said, the Boney State? He said, I'm that place. He said, what are you going there to do? He said, administration. I have a host. He said, in the Boney State. He said, if I have my way, I'll ask you not to go. When she comes, I'll still repeat it so you know I'm not fabricating story. He said, I, I, if I have my way, I'll ask you not to go. He said, why? He said, there's something about that land that doesn't do well. He said, there's something about the people. He said, I once lived there for two months and I hit brick walls everywhere I went to. I hit brick walls. He said, there's something about that land that causes men to die small. That causes men to die average. That causes people to. This man is an intercessor. He can tell you some deep things about covenants and oaths and vows and, and ordinances that have been, that were instituted in this land. And it has brought the sons and daughters of this territory to enslavement and many are not aware. You heard the minister from Beno State talking yesterday. He said he has a church member in Beno State who is from here. He said not just one, not just, he has experienced it once or twice or more. He said and they struggle in business. You might be a good man, tongue speaking, Holy Ghost field, you are right with God, but when legal forces Forces that have legal rights to operate are in action until you understand the law of appropriation in the new covenant. Those forces will have a foothold even with your Bible. They will be messing you up. 
until you know the laws by which you defeat those forces that have taken legal position in your life to frustrate you. Do you know when the devil comes to Jesus or comes to God in heaven? He has access to God though. This is the time you see roaming on the earth. He goes to heaven for meeting. And when he goes to heaven, he goes to accuse you before him. And his accusation is not baseless. His accusation comes with witnesses. It comes with proofs. It comes with proofs. The devil argues intelligently in his cases. So he tells God why some cities cannot be liberated. He tells God why some families should not be set free. He tells God why some individuals should not be set free. And I tell you, because God is a God of justice, most times Satan wins his case. The only way Satan will not win his case, the Bible says, and we overcame him. By the blood of the Lamb and by the words of our testimony. You don't overcome by arguing baselessly. You overcome by finding facts. You have to know what am I dealing with and what are the right understanding to have to engage the supernatural, to engage the word of God, to engage the power of God, to engage the ability of God to annihilate and destroy. What are the powers that are after me and what are the laws that I must know and engage to disengage them from my life? Deliverance is one of the most important subjects in the body of Christ. Many of us have trivialized it. And that's why with your being a Christian, you are still oppressed by spirits. What I was trying to recall from the first story she told me, she told me the second story. He said, as though that wasn't enough, I got to my hotel. And I met another friend. You know why it's, they like to meet people. You, you see the way Pastor Sherry was shaking everybody yesterday? That's the white for you. When she was going around shaking everybody, they like to meet people. When they meet you, hello, how are you? What's your name? My name is, they introduce, they're, they're very free people. So she met this other Nigerian at the, at the uh, hotel in Abuja. And they engaged and began to talk. And she told them, told her, I'm going for a conference in a boy state about clicking. They said, about clicking, how? Why? Second person. I'm not saying this scenario happened at once. One was in the aircraft. The other one was in Abuja. He said, why? Of all places, why, why there? He said, is this something really wrong with that place? He said, everything is wrong with that place. He said, if you are not strong there, they will frustrate you. <laughs> so when we went to the airport to pick, the first report she gave me on arrival was, what is this thing I'm hearing about your land? A right. But two person that is courage about her. Have you noticed something? That if somebody commits a crime, you're a lawyer, man. Somebody commits a crime. And maybe police goes after the one who commits the crime. It doesn't matter. The people who are in that environment where that crime was committed. If they identify you as the one who is the culprit, they come pick you. Take you away. Hello? Hello? They come pick the culprit of the crime, take him away. I'm going somewhere. One time somebody asked me, when a chapel is flourishing in a boy state, and Ambrarians are flourishing in a boy state, business wise, most of the high rising buildings you see are Ambrarians. Why are Ambrarians not flourishing in their enterprise? I said, when the policeman comes to arrest a culprit, he looks for who is the perpetrator of the crime. If you are a perpetrator of a crime and you are guilty of the crime, and this man is innocent, they come pick you and take you away. They have no business with this man. So you, you, you can be in an environment and be wondering why others are flourishing. And you is not flourishing. It's because you have a connection with the land. 
And that land has something speaking over it that affects everyone you call son of the soil. So, so many of us can come to that same land that is cursed and flourish. You know why he's flourishing? He has no part in what the men and the people from that place are partakers of. You see, it's like the scripture I read for you. I want to take you back there again so you can understand the concept of deliverance I'm trying to share with you. He said, giving thanks unto our God who has made us fit to be partakers. So that means we were not partakers before. We were partakers of other kinds of forces, other kinds of deals and arrangements. But this time, God has brought us into inheritance of the saints in light. For he has delivered us from the power of darkness. And has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. So the event that moved us from darkness to light was called deliverance. The event that will move you from bondage to freedom is called deliverance. The event that will move you from the control of darkness, the control of powers that fight against your destiny and move you into freedom to fulfill your destiny is called deliverance. It's called deliverance. It's called deliverance. I want to round up quickly so we can pray because anytime from now, I guess we're coming. Whenever you are trying to achieve something in destiny and it looks like what you are trying to do, there are brick walls. You are hitting against rocks. See, you need to dispense the law of exemption. <laughs> it doesn't matter the people in your community that are affected by whatever I said. You need to understand that by virtue of what Jesus did on the cross, you can appropriate the law of exemption. And declare yourself exempted from what is affecting them. Hello, somebody. I say hello, somebody. If I'm talking to you, shout a big hallelujah. Take a study of events in your life. You know, I like to ask questions. I hope you know one of the things that makes a man intelligent is the questions he asks. You don't know an intelligent man by the things he say. Sometimes you can identify an intelligent man by questions he's asking. Take a stock of events playing out in your life and ask yourself, are these things ordinary? I was in Abuja one time having a conference, an international conference, not organized by me, organized by my spiritual father. And after that, one of the sessions, I went with him up into a lounge and we were there with some senior ministers from Nigeria. And I was in the same meeting with them. And we're talking about territories, talking about nations. And somehow, oh, this man was there with me. He was there with me. Then he was serving as executive secretary of SEMA in the Boy State under the Vumai's government. And then the subject of a Boy State was mentioned. You remember? Eh? It was a focal point in the meeting. Everyone was on the table. Men that mattered in the ministry were sitting down there. I was there, he was there with me. And they began to discuss. And you know the subject matter? Why are a boy? ministers not shining the light of the gospel in this country why are they not amongst the top ranking ministers we hear of in the nation besides that you also talked about the Igbo ministry landscape why are the Igbo ministries pioneered by Igbos no ranking high? 
when I got back, I began to cry to the Lord and I said, Lord, I need to know why. I started asking questions. Is this something we did against you that is responsible for the, the orphanage, let me use that word, that we experience in this region as far as the gospel is concerned? Ebos are like orphans as long as ministry is concerned. Dr. Paul Energy asked me a question in Abuja. Pay attention because if you if you have a heart, this thing will touch you. If you have a heart, this thing will touch you. Except you don't have a heart. Dr. Paul Energy asked me in Abuja. I was at Glory Dome. He said, You're an evil man? I said, Yes. He said, I have something bothering me. So why do Igbos not do well in ministry? He said, most of the people in our church are responsible for building these churches and they are Igbos. They are responsible for giving billions. House on the Rock, G.O. And for us, he said the same thing in Lagos. He told me, he said, two Igbo men built this whole House on the Rock church from foundation to roofing. And they built it with millions of dollars. You go to Winners Chapel, the Ebos. You go to Redeem, the Ebos. Then when you come to the churches that are led by Ebos, they are hitting brick walls. And then I was asking, Lord, what did the Ebos do wrong? Why have you taken our children and sold them as gifts to other people? And we are like orphans without fathers. And we are like orphans without fathers. And the Lord began to show me some cardinal things that are responsible for instituting a course in any territory or in any man's life. I wish I had the time. But maybe in the evening, I'm going to show you seven things that people practice that make the course effective in their life. And until you bring deliverance to the table, Cities, communities, families, and individuals will still be enslaved by their tax masters. What did the Igbos do wrong? That the Christianity in the Southeast has become very porous now. A young lawyer called me one day. I had the call on record. And he spoke for more than 45 minutes. Screaming and shouting on the top of his voice. And making it clear to me. That this thing we are doing called church. They have an agenda now. To burn them down. In this land. He said, Pastor Abba. Why I called you? Is because in my university days I used to know you. And I respect you and I know you teach the truth. He said, Church is destroying our culture in a boy in Igbo land that they don't recognize church. That church is white man's religion. That way we have our own religion. And our own religion is traditional religion. That a boy does not belong to our so called Jesus. A boy belongs to as a wine. If you know a boy, you know that a boy is a water place, and the spirit that operates in this region is the spirit of the Ezen wine. And he told me, If you want to flourish, so come and meet me so I can take you, you have to bow to his wine. He said, what he's telling me, I will not believe him now. But he knows people that he has connected. He said, you need to believe in our tradition. 
You see, you are the one destroying our tradition with Jesus everywhere. Jesus everywhere. I thought this guy was joking. I have it on record. Go on the internet now. On Facebook. You'll be shocked the number of young people. I'm not saying old people. Young boys. Who are now publicly acclaimed native doctors. Small boys. 23 years. 20 years. 19 years. If you see where they are doing, where they are, they call it ego or whatever. If you see where they are doing their snap and their cola and their. If you see the, the number of Igbo youths that are trooping to shrines now looking for money. I used to think that tradition was a practice of the old, old people, grey hair men. Tradition, when I mean tradition, fetish traditional is now the hobby of young boys. We need to ask ourselves questions. What is the foundation? What is the foundation on which we are building? We need to do something about it. Something has to be done about it. In some places in this boy, some traditional rulers still kill before they bury some people in this boy. There are places I heard they still pound children in this place. And you think when those things happen, that God will flourish his city. You think when such practices like bloodshed, Reverend Ken, a few days ago, they have killed a number of people again at Ezaifium. A lot of people have been killed just two days ago. The camp chairman, the camp chairman called me particularly personally to tell me about it. He said they were in a meeting with His Excellency the Governor and they were talking about the killings. I said, sir, this thing is not something to sit down and discuss politically. It's not a political thing. This thing is an altar thing. There are principalities in territories that thrive and feed on sacrifices of human life. When it is time for them to receive blood in their bank, they still get something in the realm that makes people heartless for no reason. They can just use land disputes to brand this or to package the reason for the bloodshed. But it's not land disputes. It's just a diplomatic way to hide a spiritual conspiracy. A spiritual agenda. And you think in such territory such things happen that people will flourish like that until watchers and watchmen rise up and begin to build broken walls and altars God can take his property and walk out of the city God can take his property and vacate a territory and that territory struggles you do anything there? no We heard the story of how ministries in the Yoruba land began to blossom and flourish. And they began to trace it to how the Yorubas were instrumental to receiving the missionaries that first came to Nigeria at Badagri. The things they did to accommodate them. There were some regions that were after them to kill them and I heard that the Igbos were also part of it. After them to kill them, to behead them, to annihilate them, and all kinds of things. But the Europeans made their homes a dwelling place for them. And on the account of that, the Europeans and their descendants are ever flourishing in ministry. Do you know we have not yet repented? adequately from the effects the atrocities 
and the crime that was perpetrated during the Nigerian Civil War. The effect of that war is still fresh. Not just physically, spiritually fresh. Do you know how many souls were massacred on Igbo land? More than 3 million Igbos died. Children, mothers, pregnant mothers, some were raped to death. Some were raped to death. Some were raped to death. Massacred. And the blood of those people are still crying for vengeance and crying for justice. Until we do something about it. I'm not sure the day of restoration is near. You know, demons operate legally when blood is in action. The way demons find a foothold for operation is when they see blood is in operation. Let me tell you, no matter the programs we do in the boy, no matter the meetings we do in the southeast, if we are not strategic about carrying out certain prophetic actions that will deliver this territory from the bondage that holds it, we will only do programs but in vain. We will only do programs but in vain. We will only do programs but in vain. We will only do programs, but in vain. I am more particular about addressing the issues, real issues, that affect the agenda of God in this region than just having programs. Holy Spirit will give you praise. Time will fill me in the evening. I'm going to talk about seven things that perpetuates Satan's activity in the life of a person. Whether it's in your personal life, whether it's in a community, whether it's in a region. I'll show you seven things. That will be the first session before our guests come. You need to be here to hear it. Because by understanding the house is established. By wisdom, the house is built. These are not times for reckless Christianity. These are times to sit down and understand what is fighting us. No, there's something fighting us. There's something fighting the evils in ministry. Something fighting destinies in this region. Anytime the subject of evil is mentioned in this country, have you noticed the disdain with which people, whether it's political, whether it's economical, it's not ordinary. It's not ordinary. It's not ordinary. We need an apostolic invasion of truths. Now these are not times to do programs and just prophesy to people. We need to sit down on the table and identify the factors responsible for where we are and deal with them decisively. Except what you want to do is play church. I didn't come to be a pastor. I came on an apostolic assignment. If this is the only thing God called me to do, I'm fulfilled doing it. Do you see how every other person in this country who is not from this region is celebrated at their peak? The most anointed from this religion is relegated to the bottom. I'm like a Moses. My gospel will not sound very friendly most of the times. There are people that must leave Egypt urgently. Please help me bring man of God to the front. Please give me. Bring man of God for me. Are you sure you're okay, sir? There are people who must leave Egypt. 
and he must live now. Sometimes I listen to some of the most prominent voices you know around the country. And then I ask myself, is it that these people preach better than us? <laughs> is it that they are doing something much better? And a lot of times I found out it's not about the preaching. It is the structures in the land until we pull them down. We can shout at our highest voice. It's not going to cross any ceiling. I want to usher you into prayer this morning. Can I help you pray this morning? You're going to break free from anything holding you back. Anything holding you as an individual. Let's start from there. The inheritance of God. Inheritances. Promises. Precious things. Spoken concerning your destiny. Spoken concerning your future. Spoken concerning your life. Spoken concerning... But until you get up in the spirit and take action on them, you're heading nowhere. Pastor Ken will tell you how many times he has done prophetic actions in this city. I've done my own anyways. And beyond this city, even in the southeast. And what is the cry? Lord, open this territory to the globe. Break the fallow ground here. I'm a minister. So I should understand ministry more than some of you. A doctor should know what is happening in his terrain. A lawyer should know that you're a lawyer. You should know what is happening in your terrain. I'm a minister. So this is my field. When I talk ministry, if you are not a minister, please don't be offended that I'm talking ministry. In the Yoruba land, God is throwing them up anyhow. There's no management skill you do in ministry here that will work until you deal with foundation. It's not money risky. Some of us have attended the best of conferences. We've gone to Lagos, sat down, gone to Abuja, sat down, heard from the best people. They taught all those things. Some of us came back, practiced it better. The result doesn't look like what they have. And we found out this thing is not just the management skills. This is not just the people's skills. There is a foundation and a structure that we must collapse. And then you will see a whole land redeemed. A whole territory redeemed. A whole territory reclaimed for God. You will hear of bloodshed again. This one church is here and communities are fighting. We have not yet had risen to our call. One of our guests told me, he said, in our states, the church came together and united and we took an oath that nobody will sit on the traditional stool in our city except that person is a pastor. He said, nobody. He said they instituted the Toti who is a pastor. He said when they were done with that, the Doma land, they instituted a an Otiu Doma who is also a pastor. He said, and they listen to men of God. I've been to the Toti Palace in Benue State. And right inside you will see a chapel of prayer. Every day prayer is going up there. Took all the idols in that Tulchif palace and destroyed it and dedicated the whole city to God. And once the foundation that operates in a territory has been dealt with, watch, you release the people of that nation or territory into a life of bliss. Success becomes natural, prosperity becomes normal. But there are idols we must remove. Foundations we must crash. 
in the evening I'm going to show you some things you never knew about foundation. Some people think foundation is only when somebody goes to the village and kill chicken and offer it to an idol. Idols of the heart can establish negative evil altars. There are idols of the heart that can establish evil foundation in territories. One of such idols is mammon. When mammon becomes a driving force than the love of God in our hearts. It can become the foundation for erecting evil altars in a territory. You don't know. And I can show you that from scriptures. There are many I can show you from scriptures. We are going to pray this morning. I'm going to lead us to pray a prayer in five minutes. The first prayer. You're going to be dealing with things that have been dealing with your personal life. Do you know sin can establish a negative foundation in your life? Sins, iniquities, bloodshed. Idol worship. When people say that God no longer matters to them, that what matters to them are gods that don't have eyes, that don't have ears, that don't have nose. What you have done is to hand over your territory to the devil and he will run it the way he wants. We are going to come to God in prayer this morning. Stand on your feet where you are. I don't know what you think is working against you but you're going to look at your foundation critically again this morning critically 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 there's a foundation in the east my father pastor david the he told me something he said before he left Enu and went for lagos he said if you see how much they tried to clamp down on me how much much they try to. This is the region side. Where you are attempting something unusual, you make more enemies than friends. This region. This region. And if you see people, there are evils who are doing great exploits around the world. You will never know their evils. Taking an oath never to come back to this region. Just because of how their own treated them. This is a region where you attempt something big. You are trying just to make sure that people don't laugh at us. Not because you're trying to do something for yourself, but because you've taken time to study carefully. You see the embarrassment in the region. You've, you've been to places and heard how they mocked us. Same land. A pastor, a Roman pastor told me something. He's a man of God. God has blessed me in this land. I've been here for more than 12 years or so. I built a house here. I have my this here. My children are flourishing here. I go abroad, come back later. I want to go. He said, Most of my members are Igbos and they are helping me. They are doing well. He said, But man of God, I don't know what is wrong with the Igbos in this city. Why are they not supporting their own? Why? And at the time he was talking to me, he didn't know I was even evil. Oh, you were with me. This man is always with me everywhere I go. He was with me in that same meeting. He said, I don't understand. I now told him, I said, but there is the same battle I'm fighting. I said, I'm an evil man. I am from this state. He dropped his book on the table. He said, don't tell me that. I said, I'm from there. He said, no, 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 you're not from here. I said, I'm from here. I'm from this state. He said, that's a big lie, sir. I said, but I share your sentiments. Don't feel disturbed that you said what you said. I share in that sentiment. A rubber man in this land, he was with me. He witnessed it. He said, why? And you want me to keep quiet about it? Then we are pretending we are fooling ourselves. I found that the evil man doesn't want to hear truth. That's why we will never change the trajectory of things. We are fooling ourselves. Many of them we celebrate doing exploits. When they come to us at night, Nicodemus, they tell us the truth. On the pulpit, they won't say it. 
But when they come to us as ministers, we discuss real things. Some of us tell us to our face, it's shameful. Your people know how to give to us. Why don't they help you guys? Why don't they help you guys? I know the funny thing is, until we realize it and come together as one and begin to champion a common goal for each other, we are yet to come to that place of entering our inheritance in God. That which is due to us, others will take it from us. There are many drama I've seen here. And sometimes I look, I was telling somebody yesterday, I said, most times I, a, a, a woman drove past here and stopped one day and drove in and said, I'm looking for Pastor Abba. And they called me, I came out. He says, I want to ask you, why are you doing this here? Outside here. He said, I said, who are you, man? He said, I'm a prophetess, the minister of the gospel. I used to be in a boy's state. But I left a boy's state, I'm in Abuja now. I want to really ask, I've passed this. Why are you doing this here? I said, is it that you don't like it or what? Is there anything wrong with it? He said, no. But why here? I said, why not here? I said, I'm doing this here because they say there are people my heart goes out for. I've seen enough embarrassment. Enough. When you go to this other place here at Presco, it's jammed. Mega, mega jammed to the brim. Cars are everywhere. Then when you go to the one pastor by the airport, this is how the room is. And he's hitting brick walls. And you want to convince me that there's no such thing as a spirit fighting the oil of men in this city? Maybe you want to pray. Maybe you don't want to pray. But I will pray. We're going to say, Father, show us mercy this morning. Whatever has stood against us, whatever has stood against our lives, personally, collectively, you are going to show us mercy. We cry for deliverance this morning. Deliverance. Deliverance. We cry for deliverance this morning. We repent this morning. The disunity in the body is alarming. The amount of segregation in the body is alarming. Please calm down. Pastor Bionni Fatou is somebody I know very closely. Koza. There was a time some things happened to that man. And that would have been the end of his ministry and his calling. Ordinarily. That's what is expected. <laughs> the fathers in the West came together and brought covering. Bishop Oedebo took the guy, brought him close. Brought him for Shiloh, brought him for some ministers' conference, made him sit at a position of visibility so that everybody will see this. I identify with him, you can destroy him. Not long after, Bishop Oedipo, second in command, went to minister for him, endorsement. Not long after, Bishop Oedipo himself went there to minister another endorsement. That ministry has flourished more. Even with everything that would have killed them, it has flourished more. Flourished more. Because the Yorubas understand fraternity. They understand that this thing is not about this person. It's about the common interest of the land. Good morning, man. Good morning, sir. 
It's about the common goal, the agenda of this life. In the West, the apostles of the West have a council where fathers meet together. When they come together, do you know what they discuss? The next generation. Who are the guys in their twenties, twenty-fives, thirties with a burning, blazing vision? Bring them in. If you meet Bishop Oyerebu, he is very comfortable talking to a twenty-five years old boy who speaks his tongue, investing in him virtue and even resources to see that vision come to flame, because he knows he has a short while to be here. It's not going to be here forever. So they are investing in their next generation. That's why if you look at the Yoruba ministry configuration, you see they don't have a generational gap. The Papa Deboe generation is firm. They have more men apart from Papa Deboe in his age bracket that are doing exploits. If you come down to the Bishop Yoruba generation, they have them doing exploits. Come down to the Samaday and me and the rest of them. They have them in their numbers doing exploits. Come down to even the twenties. They don't kill their men. They don't waste their generals. In Igbo land, when a fellow minister drives past, he looks into your church to count your members. And not count so he can join you in evangelism. Count so he can compare to know who is doing better. The Europeans don't care about that. They care about extending the impact of ministry in their territory throughout generations. This is what we must get right, sir. And then the cross on the land will be lifted. And the ministries will blow on again. The fire of God will come back again. This fire of God and the gospel we talk about started in this land of the rising sun. This east. We were the custodian of the power of God. The custodian of the fire of God. The custodian of the gospel of holiness. I met Reverend Dr. Mba. You may not know him. He's a Nigerian. That man wedded my father. Met him and I cried. I wept like a baby. When that man was rising in ministry, there was no Pastor Chris or Yakilome. He was the Pastor Chris of this region. The ministry was on fire. Explosions happening everywhere. But because evils are too quick to judge, too quick to conclude you, they are too impatient to give you a chance. Once you make a mistake, the key will be there. The man traveled to Israel, came back, and began to teach some things. I went back to research on what he was teaching. What he was teaching was not heresy. The man was teaching something that the people in his time did not have the intellectual capacity to handle. For instance, what is the argument of most of the people who left the riches of Christ and decamped and left the man to die? They say that the man changed the name of Jesus and started calling Jesus Yeshua. But that is Jesus' name. That you didn't understand, it didn't mean it was a lie. You were too impatient to sit down and understand. What is the man saying? We killed him. He didn't teach any error. Yes, he said that Sunday was not the right day of worship. That the Jews worship on Saturday. And Saturday actually is a real day of Sabbath. But the reason we worship on Sunday now is because our Lord Jesus rose on Sunday. And then they misunderstood him. And said the man has gone off. And that's how they reduced a great giant from the east to nothing. What about Awuzie of Zoe ministry? Should we go on and mention generals that have been wounded and killed in the southeast? Some of us have begun to be so scared of living in this territory. So scared. So scared. 
The heart of kingdom is missing. The heart of love is missing. The heart of oneness is missing. We take pride in pulling others down. We need deliverance. We need God more than ever. Can you lift up your hands everywhere? Let's talk to God in a few minutes. Father, have mercy on us. Show us mercy. Show us mercy. Show us mercy. If this word ever meant anything to you, you would ask the Lord for mercy. We cry for mercy. We have sinned against you. We have done treachery against you. We have we have left you and served other gods. Ibo land today is a talk of war, preaching the gospel. A talk of war. A talk of war. Young boys are telling you Jesus does not exist. Jesus is white man's religion. Christianity is white man's religion. We don't need Christianity. Give us back our traditional worship. Give us back our idols. Can you ask the Lord for intervention in this territory? Say, Father, we come in humility. We drop our idols. The idols of our hearts. The mammon that have taken hostage of our hearts. The lust that have taken hostage of our hearts. The greed that has captured our hearts. We drop down our idols. We cast down our images, our craving images. And we come to you today in the Repentance, have mercy upon us. I wish you can pray, church. I wish you can pray, church. In just two minutes, raise your voice to God. 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 Ask the Lord for mercy this morning. Father, show your church mercy. Show your church mercy. Show your church mercy. Show your church mercy. We bring repentance on the land. We bring repentance on ourselves. We bring repentance on our communities. Show us your mercy. Show us your mercy. In your wrath, Lord, show us your mercy. Church, can I hear you pray? Can I hear you pray? Can I hear you pray? If the things that goes on around here does not touch your heart, it breaks my spirit. It breaks my soul. It breaks my heart. It breaks my soul. Persecuted the man of God before Lord, show me mercy. If I ever fought against your gospel before Lord, show me mercy. If I ever did anything against the cross, Father, show me mercy. If it is my lukewarmness that is the reason why the church of Jesus is where it is in the land, Father, please show me mercy. Correct the things that need to be corrected in my life. Put back together the things that must be put back together in my life. Father, please show mercy. Show mercy. Let your church rise up again in power in this territory. Let your church again rise up in holiness. Rise up in righteousness. Rise up again and begin to be the people for which you called us to be. Please open your mouth and pray. Let God reach us one more time. Let God visit us one more time. Let God invade our lives one more time. We ask for mercy. 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 Right now, open your mouth and declare every idol, every foundation, every altar that is not instituted by Calvary in this land, in this territory, in my life as a pastor, as a believer, as anybody. Let such altars be torn down. Every altar that stands against the flourishing of the agenda of God in my life. Every altar that stands against the flourishing of the program of God in my life. I tear it down right now. I tear it down right now. Every altar that stands against the flourishing of the church of Jesus in this territory by the anointing of God. We tear it down right now. We tear it down right now. We tear it down right now. Thank you, Father. 
Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. We believe you've been transformed by the wonders of God's Word. For additional information about us, you can visit our website at www.princetonhills.org. You can also send us a mail at info at princetonhills.org or call 070-331-66762 or 081-31-555-747. Princeton Hills Ministries, Raising Global Global Leaders. Leaders.